So and there is again beautiful day in California, it's sunny, there is no rain. And behind us, as always, there is a U-Haul trucks. They doing their job, same as this car doing its own job. And it's a beautiful piece of history right now. It's a legend. It's never going to come back again. I mean, actually, it's might going to be something similar. And as soon as I'm going to get one, the one I pre-ordered, that's a new Forerunner, which is coming in the middle of this year, right? It's going to be looks like FJ Cruiser close by. But this is the legend alive. And this car has an amazing story. I'm going to tell you today about it. So in the history of this car, the story of this car is quite amazing. Again, if you are in the car business, you probably know what's going on. But if you're not, you might going to be shocked a little bit. So this is 2013 Toyota FJ Cruiser in original factory orange color. There is a few modifications on it. There's a suspension, wheels, the roof rack, which I'm sitting on just because I want it. Because this car allows you to do so. So back in 2013, somebody bought this car brand new. And there is a two ways. They might bought it and drove it a little bit to enjoy it and after sold it. So this car was made especially for US market, nowhere else. This car, when it was brand new, somebody shipped it to Japan. The whole his life, I mean, not all of life, but those seven and almost 10 years, it's been in Japan. Now, back in 2022, this car was bought at the auction in Japan and ship it back to United States. You know why? Because I don't know why. There is a currency exchange, there is a money you can make. Plus, on the top of it, the most important thing about this car, when you get in this car from Japan, you get in it again like brand new condition. This car has right now about 32,000 miles and it's still again the same as a brand new car. So first of all, there is nowhere you can find the rust on it. Even the car came from Japan because the people over there, they do care about the cars, especially if the car came brand new with left hand drive from United States to Japan. So means the price over there, it was double price as the price at the US market back in 2013. So the people who bought this car in Japan, they do care about it a lot. And they were spending money and the time on it. So for 10 years, this car made only 32,000 miles and it's still in beautiful condition. Every part on this car improved from the factory. There is nothing you want to change. Maybe you only put suspension on it and just go places like the uh, Toyota saying, but this car can do that. So for example, nothing can stop you. I mean, if you're going to go off-roading, if you want to go to the jungle, if you want to go to the road trip, you can do all in the same car and you don't have to put any trailer on it. You might going to put roof rack like this car does and this one snorkel so your engine gonna breathe even you're going under the water so the water line on this car it's uh, it's going that high as your balls are design of this car it's kind of brutal i mean that's the way the car design and that's the way that's the feeling the car gonna give you if you're gonna get one so the suspension of this car it's a fox and as you can see you're probably gonna see it later it's all scratched out already so it means the people who owned the car before they use it the way it's supposed to be the tires on this car it's empty i mean you can go off-roading you can drive it on the freeway on the streets it's all the same it's a beautiful nice tires i'm not talking about the cooper discover whatever it is it's just the tires the way it's supposed to be on this car the rims are so beautiful it's not the factory one it's aftermarket but they just sit in so nice and the car looks so beautiful with that roof rack on it with the american flag on the back <coughs> With American flag on the back window, the sticker, it just looks amazing. It just looks the way it's supposed to be there, okay? When you open the door and you can see interior of this car, I mean, the materials of the seat is just simple because it's Toyota, but the way they designed it, the plastic panels and the color on this car, it's beautiful. So if you're going to get the FJ in the green color, all those panels inside are going to be green. I mean, on the dashboard, on any door panel, the design of this car and the way they made it, it's so improved. Even one automaker, I'm not going to tell you who it is and whatever you can Google it, check it out in Miami. They making from this car, they taken as a base and they making bulletproof car, which is cost much more than just FJ. So the engine on this car, it's a standard V6, natural inspiration. There is no turbo, there is no supercharge. There is some companies they can make supercharge for this car and it's going to be much nicer, much faster and burn light more, more gas. It's a V6. You can find the same engine on the Tacoma, some on the Tundra, but it's a super durable. You can go 300,000 miles and do oil change once in 20,000. It's a Toyota, it's gonna allow you to do so. Uh, it doesn't have that much power on a horsepower, but again, this car has a lot of torque, which is gonna help you a lot when you're doing off-roading. If you're driving this car on the streets every day, you're not going off-roading, you're just wasting your time and you just waste your money to do so. If you have one, just drive it and see what's going on. And again, since it's car, it's a FGA, 
and they do have a lot of different applications, which is TRD, Toyota Racing Development. Intake on this car already TRD. There is an engine cover, engine shield that goes on the bottom. It's a TRD. It's made from aluminum and it's super cool. I mean, if you want to go through the rocks, nothing going to happen to your engine. You're not going to lose oil. You're going to lose nothing. You're just going to get a lot of emotion. That's what you're supposed to do when you're going outside and driving off-roading. So the step sides on this car, it's not only protection because again, you want to drive it you want to do off-roading, you want to jump over the rocks and this one going to help you, you're not going to smash your body, you're not going to smash your rocker panels, otherwise if you're going to smash it, you're not going to be able to open the door. That's why they're made for it. They're not made, you're going to step on it and jump inside. No, it's not. So the trunk in this car, it's super nice, it's super easy access and there is no problem to do it. You can just open it simply here. But the one quite interesting thing about the trunk in this car, I mean, it is a huge you can put any stuff you want and you can go places wherever you want to do. There is a nice sound system already prepared here. Here we're going to have a jack old style, not the one you're going to find right now. It's just hard to pull it out, but again, you're going to check it out. You're going to see it. So, and when you're trying to change your tire and you see the jack this way, it's old style. You cannot pump it. You have to screw it, right? And you see the tire, which is bolted on your rear door. You understand it's a tough car and it's going to be hard time to put the spare tire on this car if something's gonna happen. So that's why you have to take care of it. You have to release some air from your tires when you're doing off-roading before you're doing that, not after when your tires blow out, right? But again, the quite interesting thing, on the back door from the inside, you cannot see the button which you can open it, push it and it's gonna open. If somebody gonna put you inside and kind of trap you inside the car, right? There's a thing right here, you have to pop it out and there is a, main switch the manual one i know about it because i did it before so there is a small switch you can push it in and open it but again if you are the lady or someone who doesn't know what's going on there you're just going to go inside somebody gonna lock it and that's it you're going to stay there you're never going to find this and you're never going to find some switch which is inside there manually you have to push it and open the door from the inside so basically this car telling you you sit in or somebody putting you there because you're supposed to be there and you have no choice just to stay there and do whatever this car gonna tell you so the condition of this car, like I say, for 10 years old Toyota, it's really good because even if you're going to check on the frame from the side, it's all black. There is not even single dot of the rust, right? If you're going to go under the car and check your transmission, you're going to check your engine. There is not even single oil drip from that. You know why? Because it's Toyota. 300 miles for this car, it's just nothing, you know, it just starts living. And like I said before in previous videos, any Toyota, if you feel any kind of noise coming from the engine and you call a dealer, they're telling you just go next 5,000 miles, it's gonna break through. Break through what? I don't know. But this car telling me I know what's supposed to break through. You're supposed to go drive 300,000 miles and nothing going on. That's cool. The Safari Snorkel is sitting there. Like I say, you can go up here under the water and drive it through. You know why? Because you're gonna still suck in the air to the engine and the engine gonna work, doesn't matter what's going down there. So if there is a nuclear bomb next to you, you know, somebody shooting and whatever, you just keep driving under the water and you're gonna hide from everyone and you're just gonna stay alive, survive, and that's it, gonna live happy life somewhere deep in the wood, you know? So basically when the car was brand new, you're gonna have five years warranty or 50,000 miles. But again, if you buy a brand new Toyota at that time, I'm not sure about right now what's going on with Forerunner, but actually even right now it's good. So when you buy a new Toyota and somebody offering, do you wanna do buy extended warranty up to 100,000 miles or 150,000 miles? Tell them, no, I don't want you. Because I'm telling you right now, if you're gonna put do the oil change with good filter and the good oil, you can drive up to 30,000 miles and nothing gonna happen to your engine. Just forget about it. You know, Toyota go places. That's what it made for, you know? There is one more quite interesting, quite interesting point about this car. There is a three wiper blades on your windshield, which is cleaning nothing. I mean, they're just there. They're just pretending it's so cool, it's so nice, but actually they more useless than useful. The windshield on this car, it's closer to G-Wagon and uh, it's not aerodynamic car, you're not gonna go fast, you're just gonna drive it slow, you know, because you cannot go on a freeway more than uh, 70, uh, 70 miles per hour on this car, otherwise you're gonna get shocked since you're going left and right. Yes, there is, like I say, there is a suspension on it, the suspension, there is a control arms and the shocks. There is a lift kit on this car. They just put extension between the shock and the frame, so they lift it up. But again, this car, it's so nice because you can lift it both ways. You can do the suspension lift or you can do frame lift. What is frame lift? You put in the extension between your frame, original frame of the car and the body of the car. So you can lift it twice. You can go up to here and Toyota doesn't care. 
So the front of the car looks nice, but sometimes it looks much better if somebody puts something on top, like for example, some cover from the front bumper or additional headlights, additional headlights on the top, here, there, because the original one, honestly, it's not that good. I mean, if you're driving it at night, anywhere you go, those headlights, the original one, they just blind. They're not so blind, they're not so dark, but they're just not enough for what you're doing, what you can do in this car it's much more whatever headlights allow you to do. So that's why, again, if you buy this car, from my opinion, just put extra lights there, extra lights here, and you're gonna be fine anywhere you go. That's the beautiful thing about this car. So the interior of this car, it's pretty simple because again, it's a Toyota. And the way they design it, it's so simple. I mean, you can turn on your, the, the, the heater, you can turn it off or whatever. It's, it's so huge switches, huge buttons. The hazard light is here, you know? And the transfer case, it's easy to move. It's not getting stuck. There is a lot of buttons like rear diff lock and uh, traction control off. I don't want to go through it. But again, that kind of car, it gives you the feeling. And you're going to even here right now, I can see the receipt from the Home Depot. That's the places you're going to go. Not go places, but go Home Depot. And the way it drives, it's just so nice and smooth. So you probably, not probably, you really don't care where you're driving. I mean, you're driving in a city and somebody gets stuck on the road and, uh, you know, you just want to go around it. You don't want to interrupt the guy if he just, you know, his engine fall apart or something. You're just going like that and are you care about it? No, you don't, you know, because you're driving Toyota FJ Cruiser. That's, that's the feeling it gives you. So when you drive in this car, you see a lot of different parts. You might see it on the other different cars. So, for example, the mirror. It looks like exactly the same. First of all, I didn't get it. I mean, the, quite time ago, we, we've been doing video about McLaren and now I see that auto button and the green light and the shape of it. I'm like, okay, that's the McLaren, but I'm driving Toyota. So the glove box, as you can see, it's not even going to fit the manual books. That's why they, it's not there. You know, it's just sitting there for something. So you're going to put the cigarettes or whatever, or your gun, you might going to put it there, but still not enough space. Is it a comfortable drive? I mean, it's quite comfortable. I mean, the seat, there is no, no, no support at all. It's just flat, you know, like a bench. So when you're driving it, it's Toyota. So the car gonna hold you, I'll just hold the steering wheel tight. So there is a quite interesting things inside the car, which is the sun visor. I mean, sun visor, understand the one in the front, but on the side, and it's so big. So you have to, every time when you're coming out from the car, you have to lift it up. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to, you know why? Because when you open like that, you cannot just simply go out. So one more thing when I'm driving it and I'm a driver, if you want to put sun visor like that, for example, your car is not tinted, you don't have a sunglasses, you put it like there and you now you're driving on the freeway, you're driving on the high speed or just the city, there is a car in front of you, right? So when you're driving in the city or driving on the freeway, there is a sun shining, you know, you want to put your sun visor, open it because you don't have a sunglasses, but actually the windshield is so far away and it's designed this way, the sun never going to come here. But again, you're driving it and now you remember your wife call you or you like trying to find the cash, you put it somewhere or the receipt you need it. So you're trying to open this compartment and what we have right now. Hmm, interesting. I cannot see the road, I cannot see the sun, where I can see nothing. And you're just driving like that. Why they made it this way, I have no idea. And why you need the box right here. Why? So the information this car is going to provide you while you're driving, it's quite a lot. So you're going to have a speed, you're going to have RPM, you're going to have the gas level, the temperature of the engine, and your battery charging. You know why you have a battery charging right here in the central cluster? Because, again, from the factory, the car telling you, you have, to, you have to put a lot of lights because the headlights we put it on the factory, it's not enough for you. So probably you have 10 headlights more extra added on your roof and you have more like five added on your front bumper. That's why you're going to have a charging system check right here in front of you. So when you're checking the gas level, make sure your charging is good. Otherwise, if you're going deep in the woods, you might gonna get stuck with drained battery and with no charging system. Right here in the middle, it's an old style Toyota Mitsubishi. Everybody was doing it back in Japan. You're gonna have the compass, you're gonna have the angle. So basically the car is telling you, every time when you're going up the hill or down the hill or you want to go sideways i mean this car is going to allow you to do so but again you have to always check your angle if you're going more than 30 degrees that's it you might gonna flip the car on the side or something else so toyota not responsible for that if you lift your suspension you're going up to 30 you might gonna flip it again because the car is lifted especially if you lift it both ways suspension and the frame and the body so that's it 30 degrees that's what toyota telling you you can go but not anymore in the middle 
there is a temperature outside there is a watches i mean i don't know why but it's nice it's it, it came from 80s not actually from 90s in the 80s in japan if you're going to check the mitsubishi pajero or something else they do have it everywhere because it was kind of cool it was a trend so when you're driving again when i'm driving this car it's a kind of daily driving for me right now because it's been quite a few days i was driving it i got this car from japan we're gonna sell it to some lucky owner i mean this car is really lucky it's a legend and not quite like long long time ago i did see there is a brand new trailer they've been selling the brand new fg cruiser back from 2012 or whatever but somebody was keeping it all this time they sold it for a lot of money i don't know how much i mean i know how much but you can google it check it yourself so basically msrp for this car back in the days was about 47 48 betweens i mean what are you gonna get you're gonna get additional options it's gonna be much more if it's simple car base you might gonna get a little bit cheaper right but somebody bought it and kept it over those years and now they got the profit they sold it for like for a lot of more money right so if you buy this car it's legend if you're going to keep it you're going to make money from it later on but don't drive it so many miles because the car not going to keep the value this car the old all the old cars they keep in the value only if it's a low mileage car in great condition like this car so the luckiest guy who's going to get it he's going to get lucky for sure would i buy this car for myself for sure i would if i know what i'm going to do with that if i want to buy this car and just to keep it as a spare car it's not the car i would buy and keep it as a spare car that's it simple simple uh, simple answer on a simple question so the way i'm driving on the street it's already i'm going 30 miles per hour and it's noisy you know why it's noisy because there's empty tires so right now we're going to jump on the freeway and drive it about 60 65 miles per hour and you're going to hear it you're not just going to you're not going to maybe feel it until you drive one but you're going to hear it because we're going to record it for you so you might gonna say FJ Cruiser same as the Jeep, but it's not. First of all, it's discontinued. They're not producing any more those cars, right? So it's hard to get, it's hard to find, and they crashing them. They they just dying. They taking them apart. I mean, this car not gonna be exist anymore. I think next five ten years, it's gonna be hard to find even one. The Jeep is just everywhere. There's a lot of Jeeps. They making the same one. They made the new one in 2018 in the middle of the year, and it's kind of new. It's kind of this and that. But again, it's exactly the same car as in 2007. Maybe. I mean, okay, design is different, the engine, the variety of engines is different than 2007, but Jeep, it's the same Jeep, same look, same way, whatever it is, technology, this, this, some part, five door, three door, same exactly Jeep. FJ Cruiser discontinued, they start producing it back in 20, 2007, they stop producing it back in 2014, that's it, no more, and then they're not going to do it again. So it's a quite more desirable car. People want it. And the people can get exactly the same feeling, maybe even more emotional from driving this car off-road. Jeep, OFJ Cruiser, same. But again, for Jeep, you can buy a lot of different things on eBay, online. There's a lot of shops who can do it. So the Toyota owners, they just want to put all the things, whatever selling online on the Toyota. They just want a TRD, which is going to bring a lot of values to this car, especially if it's a TRD, original one, the one is factory selling at the dealership. So I'm just tired of the noise the, the car is making on the freeway and jump on the street. I open whatever, uh, whatever I can open and I'm just driving like a tank, you know, there is a... There is a small place I can see what's going on in front of me and I don't care what's going on under me because if I already pass it, I pass it by or I pass it under, it's okay. You have a Toyota FJ Cruiser, there is nothing else you need to know about it. Uh, would I buy this car for myself? Like I say, probably not, but would I improve something if I already bought it and I'm like, are really gonna enjoy it? Are really gonna use it the way it's supposed to be? Yes, there is a lot of improvements you have to make. And the first one I would say that's the brakes. I mean, this car, you can, the, the engine is pretty much powerful and you can make 60, 70 miles per hour. But again, when there is a huge traffic and everybody's stopping and you are the last one who's gonna stop or all the people in front of you, maybe 10, 20 cars, they, they're gonna know you didn't stop, you know? So the brakes, they just super weak, you know, you step on the brake pedal and it's just not braking. It's keep going, keep going, keep going until you push it so hard, it stop. Again, is it reminding me my Volga or whatever Jiguli I used to drive? And I'm not used to driving in Russia, but I drove those cars. I know the way they work. Is it the same way? Yes, it is exactly the same way. At the end of my story from today, I would say Toyota, it's a super nice cars. If you have a chance not to buy one, just to drive one maybe your friend or neighbor they do have one and you see it but you never ask them can i drive one can i try a little bit maybe five minutes just sit with me you know let me go around for sure you have to do it this car is discontinued it is a life legend 
and it's never gonna happen again they're never gonna make exactly the same car so please make a like below and comment if you would buy one if you're gonna get the chance because like i said this car it's gonna be is already a legend and next five years it's gonna be hard to find one and trust my word this car gonna go over hundred thousand just in the five seven years with low mileage i would say up to thirty thousand and it doesn't matter how it looks like how it drives like i mean it drives like that it feels like that and noise like that but the price for this car is gonna go up and up and up see you